All righty, thank you, Joy. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening to some of our global attendees. You are attending today's webinar series from the customer success team on Cognos 11. And this is an introduction here uh, to Cognos and what we've done in the latest releases. My name is Don Bork. I'm a customer success technical program manager at NetApp. Been with the company probably about eight or so years, and I see a lot of folks on the call today that I know, uh, both uh, customers, former colleagues, and uh, even some uh, some peers of mine. So, um, thank you for all attending. A couple of house item uh, things that I would like to cover first. First. Uh, all the, the phone lines are currently muted. Uh, we do this just to minimize any background noise, dogs barking, car horns honking in the background. So if you do have any questions, feel free to post those into chat. I will do my best to answer those uh, or take natural breaks during the actual webinar to see what types of questions. Uh, I want this to be interactive, so if you have questions, please post those there. And if you feel it's probably not appropriate for the entire audience, feel free to reach out to me directly or any of your customer success managers and they can get the information for you. So some of you folks on the call may have joined today because uh, you're, you're contemplating migrating to the latest release of OCI. Maybe that's 733, maybe that's 734. Um, maybe some of you are new to report authoring inside of OCI. Or maybe even some of you have already upgraded and wondered, what the heck happened to everything? Where did everything go? So today's agenda, I'm going to walk you through. Now, this is a high-level uh, you know, discussion. I may or may not take the entire hour. If not, I'll give you back a few minutes of your day. Uh, but again, this time is for the folks on the call, so I'm hopefully going to cover some of the new navigations and the capabilities inside Cognos 11 to kind of get you started, and then we'll drill down into future web uh, webinars to give you even more context. Okay, so first, I'm going to go through what's changed in Cognos 11, talk about some things that you should consider if you haven't migrated to the latest releases, talk about some available training and KV articles out there to help you in case you run into trouble or have any kind of difficulty there. And I'm not going to spend much time in, in SlideShare, so what I'll do is jump right into a demonstration, start showing you how to build your first report, showing you the new looks and feels, the available authoring tools that are in there, or tool, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. The new search function capabilities, the different visualizations that they have, the resizing, filtering capabilities, and even walk you through an example of how to import reports, because I get a lot of customers that say, hey, it used to be, you know, I used to know how to do this, capture a report off the storefront and get it into my systems. Now I can't seem to figure that out. And then I'll wrap it up with any Q&A, take some next steps, take some suggestions on basically what you want to learn next. Okay, so without further ado, let's start into the next one here. And there we go. So what's new with IBM Cognos? It's a, you know, essentially a new user interface. What's the new look and feel all about? Well, it's supposed to be, uh, it's about simplification of the, the older UI design. So they made things, I would say, a little, a little bit larger of a real estate in Cognos 11, giving you more space to create your reports. With that new look and feel, comes some complexity for you, right? So you're not used to what it looks like. You can't seem to find the buttons and, and the right clicks anymore that you're probably used to. It still has the same drag and drop functionality uh, and that was in previous versions of Cognos, although it'll be a little bit different. So I'll walk you through some of that. Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you about is there has been some areas where they've discontinued uh, various I would say report authoring tools within the product. And we'll get to that on the next slide. Then the, also the next piece is better mobility. So a lot of these changes in the way Cognos 11 come out, whether it be for security or other purposes for UI, it's all about uh, mobility. So being able to render this on mobile devices, or at least that's a big portion of it, right? So modernizing the way Cognos works. So if I were to boil that all down, the whole ocean of all the changes in Cognos, that's what you're looking at. Simplified usability, drag and drop functionality really hasn't changed. It's still there. There is some differences there that we'll speak to. Um, the report authoring tools that changed and the mobility and security enhancements that, that are therein. All right, so there we go. So for those on the call who haven't upgraded to the latest release, maybe you're still running 732 or 731 or maybe even older, and you're thinking about upgrading. These are some suggestions or tips that I would provide you. So one, 
As I mentioned, there's a look, new look and feel. So if you're designing reports today, you're using the custom uh, authoring tools to create your own reports, you need to think up front, hey, there may be a learning curve for me here. And I guarantee you there will be. That's why we have the number of attendees we have today. So understand that your reports are not going to break per se by upgrading to the new version, but creating new reports from there on out, it's going to take some, I would say some consideration on your behalf. You're going to have to understand the new user interface, be able to learn to navigate that, and that's what we're going to start providing you here. Um, usually we come out with training uh, venues here at NANAP. Our customer success team tries to get a little bit more ahead of that, so some of the data that I'm showing you today is kind of, you know, it's our effort to be at the cutting edge of fitting you as much data as possible. I am not the reporting guru for NetApp. I'm just a user, simply like you, and I work closely with the engineering teams, the storage architects, and our reporting specialists to be able to provide some contact back, or contacts back to you. So don't hold me hostage here. If I make a mistake, I, I apologize up front. I will do my best to keep it rolling. I am going to demonstrate stuff on a live environment. That is data that's constantly changing. So it should be, I would say, pretty accurate and pretty representational to what you would be experiencing as an end user. So the second topic here is checking the prerequisites. With any upgrade, you should be going out and reviewing the release notes. With an upgrade of any uh, importance, especially in a production environment, you need to make sure that the prerequisites are there. And I'm going to talk about a couple that I know about with Data Warehouse and Cognos 11 specifically. One is ensuring that you have enough drive space on your C drive. And I get customers or users that come back and say, well, I install into a different directory. Doesn't matter. We still require 20 gigs of space. This is used for temp files that are copied over during the installations, and essentially they are deleted after the install, but that 20 gig of drive space needs to be there. So just make sure that you're, you're uh, reading these prerequisites. <clears throat> There's also been a number of security, I would say, enhancements, and this has to do with the Informix uh, aspect of security credentials that we have on the data warehouse. And there is a number of KB articles in case you run into that. I provided those in the resource section for you here. Um, some of our customers are still undergoing that, whether it be the domain authentication or local user accounts. We support both in OCI. Just make sure that you check the release notes. That's probably the biggest recommendation it can provide you there. Next is Query Studio in uh, Analysis Studio, and in, for, the, for most part, Workspace Advanced. There has been some discontinuation of some of the report authoring tools, and that might be part of why we're seeing some confusion out in the field of where did my stuff go? How do I get to this stuff anymore? So what they've done is there's essentially deprecated Query Studio, Analysis Studio, and Workspace Advanced, uh, in favor of what they call Report Studio, which is the, I would say, the big brother of all the report authoring tools. The benefit with the older versions of those or the other versions of the report authoring tools is that they were drag and drop. What you see is what you get, or WYSIWYG. As you drag the counters over, you see the values. Report Studio, much, much more powerful. It allows you to do complex SQL joins and merges with the data, but it's a essentially a creative report and you pray that the data is right, right? You just see the value that you drove or the metric that you brought over, not the actual value. So that's the, fav the favored authoring tool that IBM is going with today and they're calling it Workspace Advanced, even though essentially it's Report Studio in the back end. Now you're going to see a couple of visualizations here I have on the screen. So the menu there that I talked about with the various uh, authoring tools, Right? We're going to have one authoring tool inside of IBM uh, Cognos. The UI is going to look different. So as you log in, you're going to see different uh, presentation screens that look different. Menus in the actual uh, Cognos authoring tools have disappeared in favor of little start buttons and, and right-click options and things like that on the menu, which I'll walk you through. So just bear, bear in mind that the new authoring tool, which they're calling Workspace Advanced in Cognos 11, works exactly like Report Studio did as far as capabilities. It's just the UI and where you click things to navigate has changed. So I'm going to stop here for just a quick second. Is there any questions on the line? And if you do, just type those into the chat window here, and I will do my best. If I'm losing someone, just please shout out. Let me know I'm losing you. All right. So 
I provide you a couple of resources, as I mentioned here, before I go into the live demo. Here I have the 733 Data Warehouse Common Problems. These are things that I've already known. We've gone out there, we've resolved these issues. We have KB articles on them. There's a number of different links. There's a number of different configurations out in the world. So, you know, obviously we can't test against every possible scenario out there. So we do our best with every release, but when issues do arise, we try to create KB articles that will help you resolve them. So you don't necessarily have to uh, involve a support person to help you. Uh, just note that if you're on our support sites, you do have to log in to be able to see the answer. So we'll tell everybody in the world what the question is, but we don't show you the answer unless you're actually logged into the NetApp support site. As I mentioned, you want to review the 733 release notes for any considerations when you, you are upgrading. Um, on this note here also, and I'll kind of give you a little uh, Easter egg here, a little bit uh, more I would say advance notice that we are coming out with the 734 release that is targeted for, I mean, I'm talking hours or you know, early, early days here. So it should be out very, very soon. If you haven't upgraded yet, that may be something you would want to consider. And that's for a number of reasons. All the KB articles that I mentioned about various issues that we've found, with it, whether it be the informic security enhancements, um, any of those issues we would have put or tried to correct in the next release. So, you know, sometimes even though GA release is 733, sometimes it almost makes sense to see what's coming out in the very next one, right? There's always something that could be missed. So um, that's another, you know, I would say an important tip to put out there. And I'm getting questions on the chat line about does it change pro-author licensing? So the a licensing, you still have the same pro-author licensing that you're entitled to, whether you're on 733 or 734 or 732 for that matter. Okay, so it did not change that, that authoring or that licensing capability. All right, so. Some additional resources for you, just because I don't want to come back to the, to the slide share for you. So if you haven't been to it, you can check out our homepage at netup.com forward slash OCI. We have all of this information in our doc center. So this is available via the web, very intuitive. If you haven't subscribed to the webinars, maybe a friend has forwarded you off, you can reach off to your customer success manager. They can get you a formal invite to our webinars, as well as our newsletters, and as many uh, popular webinars, such as Upgrading OCI or Anomaly Detection 101 that we've done in the past. And we also have a number of YouTube channels available with content for you. So with that said, let me break it over into the demo here and give me a second just to change screens. And I'm gonna walk you through here with a one-on-one -on -one understanding that we do probably have many users that are brand new to Data Warehouse and some that are new to OCI in general, just trying to learn more. So I apologize for the folks that are you know, a little bit more advanced. We'll get there for you soon, believe me. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to log into OCI and let's hope we can do that, great. So as I mentioned, I'm actually logged into one of our lab servers over in Boston. And if you haven't been able to tell by my horrible uh, Boston accent, that's where I am actually located. So here in the web UI, and just because I had this open, I'll show you what your default look would be. Once we're in the web UI here, you'll see you have a reporting icon here. If this is not actually white here in color and it's kind of grayed out, then you either are not licensed for um, perform to be able to get to the data warehouse, or you're missing what they call an ETL connector, which is essentially the connector between your data warehouse and OCI. And then I would say even the last is maybe we're having a DNS problem, trying to resolve that, that host name or that short name or FQDN. So there's a couple of possibilities there, but for most users, you should see this here if you're using the plan uh, module, and you can simply click this. And this will launch us into our data warehouse. You can see here, as I mentioned uh, just a moment ago, you gotta have DNS set up. So I'm gonna just come over here and copy this. This is a lab. We don't really go through the efforts of uh, setting up DNS for us in the lab here, or NetApp doesn't anyways. So let me bring this up here. So what I wanted to show you here in the URL, and this is another point for some of our users who already have uh, um, OCI's plan module installed, maybe you're running 732 and you just upgraded to 733, you're going to notice that the URL here on the bar has changed. So for those folks on the call that you may have a bookmark possibly in a browser, you may come up with a bad message saying you can't reach it. 
The old URL used to be P2PD here at the end. All you simply need to do is backspace that out of your URL and you should be going right into the data warehouse. You can see here it's no longer necessary inside this version of Cognos. All right, so here we are. This is our storage manager landing page. This is one of our default pin dashboards. You can see it's actually specified as a home, um, a home page here. So you can see this little icon under the storage manager report HTML. So we pinned that in the product by default. You can actually change those here. And what we're seeing is the new UI design. I'm gonna bring up this just so you can see. And I actually, um, maybe I don't. Maybe I do, let's see here if I do. All right, I'm gonna bring this over just so you folks can see here what we used to be able to see was the big menu over here in the center and a bunch of other options in here. That's some of the stuff that I mentioned that was deprecated uh, or essentially removed or discontinued in the product. And it's all in favor of this type of shortcut, uh, shortcut menu bar that they have on the left-hand side as well as some small items up here in the, I would call it the menu bar still, but you'll see there's a lot of, uh, you know, buttons that you can click up here. We'll walk through some of those. So when you first log in, you go like, all right, great. How do I get started? Where are the report authoring tools? Or maybe let's take a step back. Let's talk about how do, I'm not that far yet. I just need to be able to import a report that a system engineer provided to me, or maybe I downloaded from the automation store. Let's start from there, because that's actually pretty easy. So you've come over to the automation store, or automationstore.netup.com. You see the dozens and dozens of reports that we have available. You've gone through, you found one. By the way, here's an, a, uh, an option for you to understand how to import the report. To, from the storefront into 7.33, everything on the storefront is version compatible, right? So we tell you what versions this is applicable to, and you can get the instructions there, but I'm gonna show you live on the fly how we do that. But for example, you pulled the reclamation efficiency and life cycle report, or what I like to call the real report, and this is what it looks like. You've downloaded this report, okay? That report is going to show up in a zip file. And once you open that zip file, you'll see it has a bunch of XML inside of this. Okay, so as I scroll all the way through this text file, there's a lot of information in here. And simply all you wanna do is select all, and we're going to do a copy. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the storefront here. If you haven't checked this out, please do. There's a lot of great information on this storefront from reports to solution packs to various scripts and integration pieces that we have. So take a look if you haven't seen that yet, definitely uh, bookmark that and take the chance to, or the opportunity to review what we have there. So let's jump back over here. What I'm going to do is now I have this new report saved on my clipboard. I'm gonna come over and create a new report. And I do that by accessing this little button down here in the lower right hand corner and go up to report. And then it comes up and you get an option here. So you can choose blank and these are how you format your dashboard or your report in sections. So a blank report is essentially me creating a view, whether it be a table or a bar chart or a pie chart, that's going to consume the whole page or a portion of the page. And I really expect no other visualizations to be on that page. I can also choose a, a segmented page. So for example, this one here that I have highlighted, which is two columns, meaning I'm going to maybe have a table listing on one side and a bar chart on the other. For this demonstration, I'll just keep it pretty simple and high level so people can follow along. I'm just going to select the blank here and just double click this and then it opens up. And this is usually where I see the next group of people say, now what do I do? And they start scrolling around, trying to click on various buttons because they're used to having the menu at the top of the screen. Well, I want to draw your attention here is to this little circle in the center. When I click it, this is what we're doing. We're hiding things to gain real estate back and give you more screen space and so forth. Here are where your options are. And you can see we have list, table, block, text, cross tab, and visualization. And really you can choose any one of these to get started. I like to start with a list. I think it's simple. It's more my speed. As I mentioned, I'm not that BI expert. I'm a user where I need to come in and create simple lists of information for what my executives are looking for. And this could be anything from trends to simple inventory. So I'm going to select this list here. 
and it'll come up and I can give it a name. Let's call it Dawn's um, SP report. And I got a little hash in there. There we go. And I can spell my name. Again, this is live <laughs> in real time, and you're going to expect some mistakes from me for sure. So I'm going to click OK here, and that's going to open up my, my report here or my table listing. And what you see here now is kind of what I would call, if you thought about a painter and you have a palette, and then you have your paints, right? This is my palette. This is where I'm going to create my beautiful work of art, if we will. And I, I use that to tongue in cheek. I don't know how beautiful it's going to be. We also have this floating menu here, and this floating menu is sometimes, and I'll put this out there for you folks, sometimes it can get in the way. Just know that if it does, you hit the escape bar or the escape key, it'll get it off to your screen, just move it out of your view. Sometimes I find this little pop-up uh, menu bar kind of gets in the way of the values that I'm trying to, to see. So now that we have our, our palette here, where do we get our colors from? That's the next plot. I see people clicking all around here, looking the menu. We have this other um, plus button right here, which says add report data or the source data, right? This is all of our colors that we want to bring in. So I'm going to select that. Here we have our content. So this is our team content, and you can see we have a number of different folders here. I have a folder here for Automation Store. These have all the reports that we actually have up on the Automation Store. We have a folder for cloud costs, custom reports, some information about getting started. This is kind of our SE, little Hitchhiker's Guide reporting catalog where we go out there and do proof of concepts. And then we, what you would see is packages. And this is all of the information that OCI is bringing into the data warehouse. And we carve it up into different data marts. That's what we call these packages, our data marts. And they're based around specific, uh, I would say, requirements or categorizations. So you can see there we have performance, we have chargeback, we have cost, we have utilization, there are capacity data marts for various objects like volumes and storage, storage pools. We have the performance around ports for switches as well as storage nodes. All of these are broken up into various data marts. So depending on the report requirement, you need to select the appropriate data mart. So for this First example, I'm going to select storage and storage pool capacity. I find this is one of the easier ones to get started with. It, um, you know, it's again my speed. I can understand the data. It's not too difficult, and it works pretty well in a list chart for showing some examples. So what I'm going to do here is click on the storage pool capacity data mart and select open. And in about a second, you're going to see my colors appear here. So now I have all the metrics that I can possibly use from this storage and storage pool data mark. And with inside the storage and storage pool data mark, we have what are called dimensions. And these are various carvings of that data. Now, all the data that goes into OCI is essentially normalized, right? So there is no real, I would say, uh, standardization across all the vendors. So what OCI does for you is makes that standard. It carves up the data, brings it into various buckets for you to drag and drop into your reporting. So here I am, I'm looking at physical capacity. I also have another column here for all capacity. I would use caution when using all capacity. That's usually where I see most people jump to. But the all capacity, if you have virtualizers or uh, I would say platforms such as like IBM SVC where you're virtualizing backend storage, you do run the risk of double counting your capacities because it will combine all of this. So for this exercise, I recommend we use physical capacity, which is going to exclude that virtualized uh, capacity there and, and avoid the risk of double counting. And that's really one of the key benefits as well for OCI in far as our business intelligence capability in data warehouse is to avoid some of those double countings that are so common with common Excel spreadsheets that you do out there today. So let's go into side of this data, data mark dimension and I'm going to do a couple of things. So first I'm going to bring in manufacturer. I wanna see all the manufacturers in my environment. I'm simply clicking the manufacturer, bringing it over to my tablet here or my palette here on this table list and waiting until I see these double blinking lines and I'm holding it long intentionally so the people on the WebEx can see that that's happening. So when I click and let go, you'll see now I have manufacturer here, so great. 
Now, the older versions or the, the versions of the report authoring tools that I mentioned earlier that were uh, discontinued, they would actually show you the manufacturer's names here. So that WYSIWYG uh, capability, what you see is what you get. It would say things like EMC, NANAP, Dell, so on and so forth. Now, the only way we can see these uh, in real time is to actually run. And up here is our play button for this reports uh, authoring tool. So very common look and feel for a play button. This is the same way. If you're looking for the options to what type of output, when you simply click this, it comes up. So it's more intuitive. It gives you other options that you can select as well. Uh, for most of my drill down capabilities that I'm trying to do in a report, and I'll explain drill down in just a moment, I usually run it as HTML. That's more interactive for me. I sure I could save it as a PS, uh, a PDF or a CSV, but HTML is typically what I'm doing, and I can also use those URLs, send them off to my end users, and so forth. So when it comes to these reports here, let's come over and show you one thing before we go too far. And what I've just done, actually, let me cancel that and go right back up here. So you can see there's a little more option here. And this is something that trips up some of the newer users when they're in here. There are additional capabilities in here that you've got to watch out for, whether it's under the show properties or under the more. The first one I'm going to show you is OCI has the capability, and many of you on the call probably already know this, that we can do drill down reports. Meaning, if I'm at storage and storage pool, why am I asking about manufacturer? So when this report starts to run, it's going to show me the manufacturer name, and then it's going to show me the model, and then the family, and then the storage, and the storage pool, and all the way down. You can just keep clicking and drilling down into that. If for some reason you do not have that capability, which I'll demonstrate in just a moment, come over to the More button right here, and then you want to go to Options. And what you'll see here under the Edit view here, you'll see that there's an option to enable drill up and drill down links. Make sure that you have that enabled. And that's something that I see a common pitfall with some of the folks that I speak to. They don't have this enabled and they're wondering why their reports aren't able to be drilled down. Obviously, if you started at the storage pool level, right, you're not going to be able to go much further down. It really depends on where in the hierarchy that you choose over here in the dimensions that that you bring over. So if I start at the manufacturer, I can go all the way down to the storage pools. If I start at the storage pool, I'm not going to be able to go that much further. Okay? So I'm going to cancel out of there. Now I'm going to come back over here and just to show you at a quick high level how this is kind of working. I'm just going to run this as an HTML. Now again, I'm not the BI reporting expert, but I can do this relatively quickly. You can see here in this report, I have a list of all my manufacturers. I have HDS, EMC, HP, NetApp, IBM, and Amazon. Now, if I were to click on any one of these, you'll see now that it's highlighted, I have an underline underneath the vendor. And this is, it takes a little bit getting used to, but if I click on EMC, you'll see that it actually drills down into the various models that I have or vendors not vendors, but man, boy, I can't talk today. I get the different models that I have. So I have Symmetric, Solera, and Clarion here. If I click on it again, I can drill down even further into the Clarion, and here we go. Here are the, the arrays. And then if I want to, one more click here, here I am at the storage pool levels. Okay? So that's how the drill down works. Uh, now I got all the way down to the bottom here, and let me close this out so you guys can see this here. Now, how do I get back? Well, if I click on this column here, uh, stop that, here we go. If I click on this column here and I come over to this little circle button right here, I can drill back up, okay? Now, there's also on many of the screens, you'll see a little option down at the bottom of the, the page that will say drill down, drill up, or go to the top of the page or to the bottom of the page. There's probably three or four different ways inside of Cognos to do the exact same thing. It's really about how far do you want to move your mouse and how comfortable you are. I'm showing you just a handful of possibilities to do the same thing here. And again, you want to come in here. There we go. I've got to get rid of that. There we go. And drill right back up. I can go all the way up to the top level. Now, one thing that's new in this that you haven't seen before, and it was kind of a problem with previous versions, and it used to happen to me a lot, I would start creating reports, start running the report, and, and kind of get lost in the browser tabs, right? Can't seem to find where the report is anymore. I wind up closing it, lo losing all my saved work. 
all of that kind of nonsense. It was just a, I would say, a less than perfect navigation in the older versions. And I think they've done some improvement here with what they've done. So whenever I'm working on a report or working on multiple reports, if I click on this column right here where it says new report, it will show me all the reports that I have open. So regardless of if I, if I ran the report or if I'm still editing the report, which happens to be on this particular tab here, I can always get back to Ground Central, back to that page that I actually have the report on, just by navigating to this little menu bar or favorites bar in the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to close this out because I don't need to run this particular report right at the moment. Actually, I'm going to come over here and add a little bit more. How about that? So I've just added manufacturer here. I'm going to come over to storage. I'm going to bring in storage name. And the way this works is I need to get it over to the column here. Wait till these double bars click again. Remember, once you see that, it's safe to let go. Now I have my storage name visible here. And now I'm going to bring in some capacity. So let's go down to the capacity column. I could choose easily capacity by megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and so forth, or even calculate my own capacities. For this example, I'm going to bring over regular capacity, bring it all the way up to the top, let it go. I can also have the option of just double-clicking these metrics here. So just double-clicking, and sure enough, here it is up in the corner. So I don't even have to drag and drop this to the column. So again, folks, I'm going to take a quick moment just to take a sip of water. If you have any questions, please put those into the chat window. Hopefully this is easy enough for everyone to follow. So what are the next things I can do here once I'm into this screen? Again, everybody's lost now because we don't have that menu at the top anymore telling us where we can do all our stuff. Well, first things first, I'm going to come over here and create a formula. I want to be able to calculate utilization. I have my capacity. I have my use capacity. Now I, know, I want to know what my percent used is. So I'm going to select this column. I'm going to hold down my control button and just select the next column. So I'm selecting both of these columns at the same time. And here's that little menu I told you about that sometimes gets in my way, just covers what I'm looking at. If I need to get rid of it, I can just hit the escape button. It's gone. Okay, so I'm going to do this again. Whoops. Hold that down and bring that in there. Now we have our menu up here. And if I hover over this little icon right here, it tells me to insert calculation. And what we've done is we have a number of different calculations. You can create your own calculation. If you want to do this times that plus whatever, you know, make your own formula, you can do so. You can use the calculations that we have here. You can see uh, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and then some that we've already calculated for you. So we have a percent difference. We have the percent used. This is the guy I'm looking for. I want to know what percentage is used. So I'm going to select this column here, and it just added it. And here it is in the very center. Now, the first thing when I'm looking at this report is I don't like it in the center. I want it all the way over at the end. I have capacity, use capacity. I want it over here. Again, the beautiful thing about drag and drop is I can simply click this, bring it over to the end, and let it go, and there it is. Next thing I notice, and again, this is what I mean about this little menu guy. It gets in my way. The next thing I notice is percent use capacity, gigabyte capacity, gigabyte probably not the best title for this. And in the older versions of our Report Studio or Workspace Advanced or Query Studio for that matter, we call them data labels. And we can come in here and change this data label to something that's more friendly, more easily recognized. So I'm going to just double click on this here. And now you'll see we have an actual name column here. So I'm just going to take this all out of here and I'm going to say utilization. There we go. There we go. We got this data label created. You should see it instantaneously update here. All right. So now that I have this, there's a number of other things that I can do in here. Now I'm going to run this just so you can kind of see the before and after so you're not, you, know, you don't lose all the steps that we're doing here. I'm just going to run it as HTML here so you can see it. And there we go. I didn't like a pop-up there, sorry. There we go. It wouldn't be a live demo if I didn't have demo difficulties. So here we go. So here's all of our manufacturers. Here's our storage. Here's our capacities. Here's our use capacity, and here's our utilizations. Okay, so very straightforward. Now I'm going to come back over here. 
And there's a couple of other things that we can do in here. So let's say we don't want a specific manufacturer to show up on this report. Maybe it's that Amazon, right? You saw, you know, hopefully you saw on this report, we're showing up zero right now. This is one of our lab instances. We really aren't monitoring. We kind of shut it off there. So maybe I want to remove this out of my report. So let me come over here, and I'm just going to click on the manufacturer, and then I'm going to come over here and create a custom filter. So coming in here to custom filter, you can see that over here we have specific values, and I have a list of all those manufacturers here. I'm going to select Amazon. I'm going to click the little plus button, put it right over here, and I'm going to say exclude this from my report. Uh, Conversely, if I wanted to just include a handful of these vendors, I could have selected them, brought them over, and said, just show me these for, let's say, EMC and IBM. Okay, so I'm going to select OK here. Just run the report again. Let's see if that same little message comes up. No, okay, that time it worked. It's expected. There we go. And here you can see in the actual report, Amazon is now out of view. Now, there's a couple of other things that we can do in here. Of course, you can change background colors. If I wanted to change the, let's say, the header of this particular bar to a green, there's a lot of different visualizations that you have, or uh, I would say options for uh, visualizing this data that uh, you are probably familiar with with Excel, right? Changing the font styles, for example, ordering, ascending, or descending data, right? Maybe I want it ranked by highest utilization to lowest. So you can do that all accomplishing it by selecting these menu bars right here. Now the other things that we can do in here are conditional styling too. So think of it this way, I run a report, I want any number that's, if, let's say I'm looking at no utilization. Anything above 50% utilization for NetApp is kind of in, I would say, risky territory in case something were to fail over uh, to that other node, you could probably wind up with some significant latencies. So we try to watch things to make sure they don't really go over 50% utilized for our storage nodes. And maybe I want a report that highlights that utilization so it stands out. I don't want to have to sift through all the numbers and you know, look for 50, 51%, 55%. So we can do something called conditional styling. And that's simply just to make the text bold, make it red, make it purple, make it whatever color you want. Now here's again, this is where you're going to have to watch out here a little bit because we have these other you know, buttons up on the top. So people kind of forget that if it doesn't show up in this bar, they think they're out of luck, they can't do it. Up here in this particular more option, you can see that we have conditional style options. And I can come in here and create a conditional style for utilization. Select the new conditional style. Sure, let's create something. I'm going to set a conditional style on this utilization, I would say, row here. So I'm going to select the utilization row. It's using a numeric range. Great. Now I need to give it some values. There's no values inside this conditional style. Come over here, give it a value. Maybe I want to say anything greater than 50%. Oops. There we go. Select OK. Click the little button. Bring it up to the top. Now come over here. Tell it to make um, this particular condition above 50%. I want it to be bad. I want it to be really bad, right? This is a risk to my business. So you can see here it automatically is going to put a big red box around my lettering. I can come in here and change what it looks like, all the colors and all of that stuff. So. Really, that's all you need to do, and I can create multiple ranges. Maybe I want to say between, um, let's say, 35%. There we go. And I can say anything between this and that is going to be, let's say, below average, you know, so a little bit different color. You can really set these reports up as the end, the end game here. You can set these reports up to be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more boisterous, little pop in the, you know, when you look at certain numbers. And you use conditional styles for that, okay? So I'm gonna cancel out of there. There's other things that you can do in here, such as showing values for when you're creating charts. I'm gonna walk you through a chart here in just a moment. Just note that with drag and drop, I can take the table that I created just now and I can actually bring it in. So let's do a filter. Let's actually filter this out a little bit more. I'm gonna remove the existing filters that I have in place, and I'm going to create a brand new one. And I'm just gonna do it for simplicity. So I'm gonna say uh, NetApp here, and I'm gonna select okay. All right, so 
Now, oh, actually, I got to go back and check because I, I didn't pay attention. So let's see what I did here. Let's remove filters. Let's create filter and net up. All right, that's what I wasn't sure about. I wasn't sure if I said include these values. So there we go. So I'm only looking at net up here for this particular report. And just to confirm once again, make sure that it looks as I expected. Give it a second to generate here. And sure enough, I only see net app. Now what I can also do is take this particular table chart that I'm looking at or list chart, and I can actually convert this into some type of graph or visualization. And I'm gonna do something just simple. Now one of the features with Cognos 11 is that it is basically recommending what visualizations work on the data that you have. Um, the idiot like me, right? I don't know, I try to throw it into some kind of, you know, uh, spark chart or, you know, scatter plot chart. It's going to come over and say, no, no, based on the type of data you have, these are what we recommend. If you wanna start from scratch and choose the visualization first, which I will do in a moment, it'll let you choose anything you want. Uh, but based on the data, eh, this is what Cognos is kind of suggesting for you. Okay, so I'm gonna just choose bar chart here just to kind of show you some of the options. Give it a second, there it is. So now again, all the data is filled in here. You can see my series or my primary series data. This is what I'm looking at, capacity, use capacity, utilization. Under my categories, I have the storage name and manufacturer, all of that, okay? So what can I do with this? Well, I'm gonna run it just so you see what it looks like. Give you a couple ideas here because I'm gonna hit on one of the points or one of the pain points that some of the people have run into in just a moment. Okay, and I got a question while this is running, how to add a sort on the utilized? Okay, and I'll hopefully touch upon that as well. So here you go, I see this here and I'm not seeing, maybe I gotta do a little bit more of a fine tuning here. Bear with me. I didn't see the actual output that I expected. And let's think about the best way to do this. So let's do this real quick because this really is drag and drop. It's pretty fast. And what I'm trying to show you, I'm gonna come over here again, click this really quick. And I know why it happened. I'm just embarrassed to say why it did. So let's, where's packages? There it is. And let's bring in, again, let's bring in storage and storage pool capacity. So you're getting that fast view of what I just did. And essentially what I did was I started at a, a too, too high of a level. So I'm just gonna bring in something really quick and I'm just gonna do it from the all capacity data mark, even though I suggested you don't. Let's bring in use capacity, boom, uh, regular capacity and use capacity, sure. And now I'm gonna create my filter again really fast, create the filter. And what I wanna do is just narrow it down to a smaller subset. So what I'm gonna do is bring in just some NetApp devices, just so you can see. I could have ran it the previous way, but it would have been pretty unmanageable to look at a screen. That's kind of what it was yelling at me about. So now I'm gonna run this here to show you what it looks like really fast. And you should see three or different uh, NetApp storage systems here. And there you go. And now I'm just gonna jump back over here, add this into a visualization, gonna create a part, by chart, a bar chart for that. And that will take one more moment here and just run this so you see what that looks like in the HTML. Give it a second, so there we go. This is what I wanted to show you. Again, these are interactive, so if I click on any one of these bars, it will continue to drill down through that particular report. So I, I actually guess I can do that for you. There we go, there you go. So you see how that is. But notice the size of this particular report, right? It's really in the upper right-hand corner, so how do we change that? So sizing is the next thing that people commonly are struggling with to be able to do. Back in the older versions, you would simply just click the corner of this and kind of drag it to a width that you need. That has changed. So what I've done here is I've selected this picture gram here that we have in the corner, and I'm gonna come over here 
to the properties. So here's the show properties. And when you come down through this particular box here, you'll see, well, let me get this little WebEx thing out of the way. Here's what you're probably used to seeing in the older versions, which was called size and overflow. Now, there's a slightly different way to do this. Again, I mentioned there's three or four different ways to do pretty much everything in Cognos. This is the way I actually utilize this when I'm creating it from a table, then I'm converting it over to some type of bar chart or column chart or a pie chart. Come down to size and overflow, you click this here, and then you have your pixel widths. And I can say it's 500 by 500, for example, or let's do something even different, make it a little bit bigger, 800 by 800, right? Pretty much a square. And then really there's no limitation to what you set for this. Uh, just bear in mind that it's the size of your display screen and that you may have to utilize scroll bars to see the entire report. So I'm gonna select apply here on this and you should see this little icon. Yep, you just saw that little pictogram there, just kind of jump over and get bigger. So now I'm just gonna say okay and then come back over here and play this or run this option here. So I'm gonna select that and there we go. Run that one more time. Just had too many open on here screen. And you can see even with some of the simple mistakes that I'm making, it's not too hard to get yourself out of trouble. There's an undo button, my favorite friend on the browser right here. So those are your undo buttons. You can see now that this is much larger, easier to read. Again, I can go through a lot of different changes, change this color palette so I don't like these particular colors. Maybe I want to change it to yellow and green. I can do so. Now, once I have this, I can also come off and save this particular report. So if I click the Save button here, it's going to open up my team content again. So this is the particular data mark, the storage and storage full data mark that I'm in. I can come back to team content here and I can look for a folder that maybe I've created or come back up to my content and save it here. Here's an example of a report that I did previously. And I'm gonna show you how I got this report in here because this is something a lot of people ask for. So let me just save this as a new report, and I'm going to call it Dawn's Ugly SP Report, just so we know what it is in reality. There we go, and save it. All right, so here we go. So now as I hover over this particular report, you see the values that are indicated. I can also go into my report and show the values so they, they actually show up in the screen. So. There's a number of different options underneath these here where you can set the conditional styles. Just to pay attention to those areas to make sure that you have all the, your, your, I would say your little functions that you can possibly choose, okay? So next, I wanted to show you how I did that storefront report earlier, now that we're actually in the tool. And let me see, did I, looks like I lost my little, button there, so let me just open it up again. I'm gonna show you because I have it downloaded on my desktop. So here we are, here's that real report that I downloaded from the storefront. I'm opening up this particular one here. I'm gonna select all, copy my contents to clipboard. Great, I have that. Now I'm going to come down here and create a new report here. So I'm just gonna select new. And what I can also do here is I can also come up here and hit these little X's, you can see I have a number of reports just from playing around for this demonstration today. I have a couple of reports. They're all named new report because I didn't take the time to label them correctly. But I can actually close out of these reports just by sit, hitting this button. No more do I have to worry about having multiple reports open on different tabs, all of that stuff. I can kind of do some cleanup there. So now I'm going to hit the new uh, report option here, bring this up. And this is something that is, again, detailed on the storefront, but uh, you know some of the users have trouble with it. So I'm gonna come over here and create a new report. Again, just gonna select the list report. Here's my little palette. Now I'm gonna come over to the queries option. So see this icon right here next to this little tool tip that they got here? When you click on this, you can see this is a little hint tells you this is what these mean. Each one of these here, this happens to be the administration for IBM Cognos for the particular server settings. Down here, it's going to tell you, you know, this is where you upload data and create new reports. They're just little tool tips, these little blue buttons. So if you get into trouble, um, you can also dismiss those, get rid of those off your screen if you don't want to look at those. Uh, I kind of keep them on there, I kind of like them. So what I'm doing is coming over here to queries. Now, how do I get that report that I have copied to my clipboard 
onto Cognos. So I come over to the report icon here and I can right click. Now there's not many right click options in Cognos anymore, but I can do it here still. So when I right click on this report, and this was kind of tricky for some of our BI guys to find, you can see here it says open report from clipboard. This is what I'm going to select. It's gonna say, do you wanna save that blank list report that I created? I'm gonna say no. And now it opens up this clipboard and here's where I can actually paste that XML file that I just copied to my clipboard. Now I'm going to hit okay. Give it a second here, it's going to upload all of that content, it's going to go through and do some validation to make sure that the code is correct. This is essentially the same effort that you would do if you had best practices and you're basically making backups of any custom reports that you have. I would make sure that you can do this, copy those reports out, it kind of works in, in reverse, export those reports out of there, make sure that you have them somewhere safe in case something catastrophic were to occur. To re-import them, you're gonna go through the same pack, uh, process that I'm currently doing. Now I'm gonna run this report just to see what it looks like. It's actually currently loaded. Let's run this report. Oh, why am I getting these window poppers here? I'll run that one more time. Uh, I'm not sure. All right, let me skip past that. I'm gonna save this report. <laughs> Let's try this real report two. And let's find the spot for this. Oh, actually right there. I'm gonna save it in my content folder and save. Okay, now I can also go back and open that report and run it, um, you know, just like you would any standard report inside of Cognos. So we're at about five minutes off. I wanna see if there's any other questions on the chat windows. Otherwise, I'll show you how to create maybe another visualization here using some of the default out of the box visualizations. But if you do have a question, just put that into the chat window. So here I am, I'm gonna create a new report again, and now we'll try something different. Let's choose a blank report. Great, let's open that up. Here we are to our visualizations. Again, here's all your visualization options. I'm gonna click visualization here. And here are all the different options, right? They got some really crazy ones in here. Here's kind of that, um, that uh, word cloud that you've been seeing that kind of popular around the world, you know, what's kind of trendy. You know, the bigger the font, the, the, the more, let's say, IOPS or latency that, that device is receiving. That's kind of a newer design. One thing I wanna call out with some of these visualizations that's a little different than um, previous versions. So for example, let's take a line chart here. So I'm, I'm selecting the line chart and it's telling me what this line chart can do. And what I wanna call your attention to is this, where it's telling me in these particular line charts, I can use two categories in one value. Well, what the heck does that mean, Don? That means, for example, I can use two categories. I can do vendor and, or storage and switch, but I can only have one value. Let's say it's utilization. Right, it's only gonna show the one value there. You need to pay attention to that when you start creating your, your um, charts and your visualizations, because some of the previous versions of Cognos used to allow you to just bring whatever you would want to that access line. Um, these, these new visualizations are more targeted. So for example, if you come over here to the simple line and column, you can see here it allows you to have two values. So if I wanted to trend use capacity versus uh, provision capacity, for example. Okay, so our available capacity versus division capacity. I can basically compare two different metrics on that same time series. So just bear that in mind when you're creating that. For this one, uh, for this quick example here, I'm just gonna bring this up just because of time constraints. And I'm going to select, uh, so I see a question, has the report studio, has that been removed as well? So. Yes, Will, um, the report studio was removed. It's Workspace Advanced. However, Workspace Advanced now has the capability of report studio, right? So it has the ability to do those complex joins and merges that report studio used to only be able to do. I don't know why they didn't just change all the names when they made this switch. Uh, you know, I wasn't on the committee for that one. But um, the workspace that we're using today, this Workspace Advance, is essentially the Report Studio. And a lot of the, I would say, the underpinnings that I look at, it actually still says Report Studio there. So I hope that clears up some of that confusion. 
So here we are, I'm looking, I'm gonna bring up the cluster column view here. Sure, great, let's bring that one in. And because in Dawn fashion, I never name anything, it's gonna be new report again. Here I am looking at this column here. I wanna bring in some, some new data. Now again, go to my packages, find the data mark that I'm interested in. Let's say maybe I wanna look at inventory, great. Here I got my inventory database or my data mark, bring that up, gives it a second, it will load. Just gotta be patient here sometimes, folks, because uh, depending on what it has, it, you might get frustrated and just kind of navigate away. So here we are. I'm gonna keep this one simple. I'm gonna just bring in storage assets, uh, kind of stay in theme what we were doing with storage and storage pool. And let's bring in storage name, there we go. So I'm gonna bring in the storage name over here to the category, I'm gonna drop that guy right in there. And we should have, yep, sure enough, we do. We have raw capacity here. So I'm gonna bring the raw capacity in as a value. There we go. So you can see it works very similar to some of the report studios. And we'll just to ease some of your concerns there, um, the queries here, we'll do that in the next session. We'll go into more in depth on how you bring multiple reports in just for time before people drop this call. So now if I were to run this report, it's gonna run a graph. I wanna show you um, something under the properties here just so you're familiar with it. So, oops, there we go. Click this column, it's all about clicking the actual little display here. Remember where I showed you how to change the sizes of the previous report when I started from a, ta a table or a list chart? It's a little different when I start from the visualization, so just bear that in mind. When I come over to the show properties, it's spelled out right for you here. It says width and height. And I can essentially come over here and change this to 800, and let's keep it again. 800, Whoop. actually I want the width much larger. So I'm gonna make this a big one so it's nice and bold in our face. I'm gonna select okay there and I'm gonna hit the run button here. And once we see that, and I know we're coming up to the top of the hour folks. I know there's a lot of information here. I just scratched the tip of the surface here. So you can see this particular graph that or visualization instead of being in the low or the upper left hand corner it's now stretched across my my landscape here again these are dragon you know drill down type reports this is just the beginning starting you off getting you into the data warehouse so you can start to begin to navigate some of these one of the things i want to call out for you and this is on um essentially the the beginning when you first log in so right here on the home page and there we go, let's go to help. There we go. Uh, where is it? There we go. do I get out of here? Let me see, home page. Oh, I actually messed myself up. So when you go into your uh, data warehouse um, instance, you're going to see a number of resources under help. And essentially, there are a number of videos on YouTube there are two in particular, I believe it's video five and six, which is report creation for Cognos 11.0, et cetera. Um, and there's a part one and a part two series. You wanna definitely take the opportunity to look at that, to, to understand where, um, you know, the, how to go through it, probably in a more professional manner than myself, uh, but it'll essentially walk you through that uh, particular use case, show you some examples, those YouTube videos change all the time. That's built right into the product, so when you go there, you'll have full access to it. It's right underneath the help menu. There's a nice little overview that kind of walks you through some of the Cognos 11 features, um, some of the, the same stuff that I was exposed to early on. So I hope this was helpful. I know I'm past the hour. I have another question here about, is there documentation listing what data is available in the various packages? Yes, there is a number of different things. I would suggest going to documentation center or docs.netup.com to look up the information on the data warehouse. If you're not seeing the information that you particularly need, um, I think it's Emory, please let your customer success manager know. They can hunt that information down for you. There's a number of different communities, websites that we have with this information. So again, it's always moving. Uh, boy, I used to remember the number of data marts and packages, but let's say there's 12 data, different packages in there. They all have specific purposes that you need to take into consideration when beginning your journey and creating some of these reports. So I'll wrap things up here. I'll keep the line open for any Q&A. Uh, for any questions that you may also have. And again, I will post my contact information up here on the screen. So if you have other questions that I didn't get an opportunity to answer, 
please reach out to me directly or reach out to one of your members in your team. And let me see here. And if not, then we all look forward to seeing you at a future customer success webinar. So let me just put that right there. That's my contact information. Please feel free to reach out to me directly. And yes, uh, this webinar is recorded and we will be doing future, uh, I would say, series on this Cognos 11. We're still kind of building that stuff out. We're trying to get our heads wrapped around many of these changes as well, uh, but I continue to work very closely with some of our BI specialists to try to pull some of these little tidbits out, some of the things that kind of trip people up. So um, the last point is we do have that release coming out, 734, that's coming out very, very soon, so just keep your eyes open for that. We have on-command insight, or we have the insight event in Las Vegas. I hope to see you all there. I know many of the people on the call will be there. So we look forward to having you there and meeting some of our executives and learning about some of the newer technologies. So on that note, I'll thank everyone, and I bid you everyone a, uh, have a great day. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you, guys. And I'll stay on the call. If anybody has any questions, you can feel free to send those into the chat window. Thank you.